guys, this is Dan from the Admin Gamers channel and as promised I'm going to be starting my Cities 2012 uh, Let's Play and uh, Tutorials and uh, this is going to be uh, my second tutorial, first one was my terraforming and uh, this is going to be uh, my tutorial covering the basics in terms of tips and hints for Cities 2012 of course everything possibly won't be covered here because the game is very wide I will have separate tutorials for different sections but this is sort of a general, a very basic uh, just concept and what you should know or just sort of small things that you should keep an eye out for while you play the game or things that you might have not paid attention to please give it a thumbs up uh, below and uh, if you have any other questions uh, leave your comments there and uh, otherwise that's about it enjoy and uh, watch and hopefully learn something new happy gaming see ya map selection well the first thing you should remember is every time you select the map you obviously have the difficulty and surface area and availability at the bottom and the free slots of course the difficulty will tell you how hard the map is usually that's based on how much transport that actual map has and uh, of course how flat it is of course the easier maps are substantially flatter and straighter which means you don't have that many hills to take care of and of course free slots shows you how many of these type of maps you can uh, play again it means I can load up for example I don't know let's say the crater I can have maybe two maps of the crater sometimes when you go to some for example if I go to oil let me give you an example here free slots 100% free slots 60% as you can see I don't have that many the rocky desert I already started playing so I only have 60% free slots so I might be able to load up two more cities in the same sort of map and then it won't allow me to use this map to play so this is a good thing to keep in mind as well when you decide to choose a city make sure you choose and use it as effectively as possible because you don't have an unlimited amount of uh, cities or uh, the types of maps that you want to play in so I can't always push all my cities in the rocky desert because I can only maybe put maybe two or three cities because of the free, free slots will only allow me that rotating buildings you can actually rotate buildings when you hold shift down so let me give you an example I'm gonna pick let's say the private school I'm gonna stick it here and if I hold shift away from the road of course it rotates if it's to the road it automatically adjusts and puts the entrance of the building towards the road now another good thing to keep in mind is when the holding shift you can rotate the building and placing those buildings as well as you can see each building when it's placed it has a red dot and uh, that red dot being a road has to connect that building to that red dot it means I gotta you have to place a road that connects it to that red dot to make that building connected to the road as you can see postcard view you have the postcard view when you press uh, the C key so for example if I want to make a postcard view now I push C and it gives me this beautiful view here of course you can uh, take screenshots as well but we'll cover that in a few seconds as well and if you press C again you come out of the postcard view and you come up to your standard view which you had before also while we're talking about the views if you push the F2 key it'll be toggled into the windowed view so for example if I want to do other things like talk to my friends on Skype I can push F2 key which I will not demonstrate now because it might crash but once you do push F2 it'll switch the actual game from full screen into windowed view mode it means you can actually decrease and increase the size of the actual game that you have here in your windows screen and you can have let's say on the right side your Skype and other programs that you're running and dealing with or maybe surfing the internet while you're playing on the left side of the screen your game itself and uh, of course when you repush F2 it either comes back and if that doesn't work usually if you click the game you push then shift and enter or alt and enter and that should switch it back to the full screen now within the game itself uh, usually what loads up is of course your view options which you should also keep in mind you can switch it to different times of day so for example I can switch it from night till daytime depending on what time I put as you can see it's so 6 a.m. 9 a.m midday and all the way till 3 a.m. so if I go to 3 a.m. and you see I do have a night view of the city so really if you want to change the atmosphere that you're playing in you can obviously change that by using the view options to a different time of day now talking about the screenshots if you press F11 I'll just do that now I just pushed it I take a screenshot of this nighttime view uh, these screenshots will be actually placed in your C drive users directory your name that means for example my name is Dan so it'll be username users C drive users backslash Dan backslash pictures backslash uh, Monte Cristo backslash cities Excel backslash screenshots and of course if you press shift and F11 I did that as well now you make a mega screenshot 
and uh, of course that is placed in the same location and uh, the final screenshot method if you hold control and f11 i did that just now as well you take a satellite screenshot and i will be showing you of course the screenshots as you are watching this right now now of course while you're playing another good thing is to keep an eye out for the message center which is uh, right under your city name it's in the center as you can see it says what's happening what's needed what is changing in terms of your economy so this is pretty good as well loans it goes without saying you have to keep an eye out on your cash which is on the top left as you can see here i have plus 175,000 every month or per click as i like to call it now to make a loan you can left click on the money symbol and on the bottom of the actual uh, different types of tabs you have the general tab which shows you income tax corporate tax and services how much you're paying you have all the taxes you have the loans now you can take a loan here if you do need the money sometimes in the beginning depends on your gameplay you might need to take a loan to go for the high-end expansions so of course keep in mind every loan is going to have uh, the payments left and uh, the outstanding debit so for example i'm going to take a loan for a hundred thousand repayment is two thousand per month and status is 50 clicks so let's take it activated now outstanding debit is a hundred thousand i have 50 payments left for that hundred thousand it means every month from my total as you noticed i'm not making any more a hundred and uh seventy eight thousand i'm making hundred and seventy six thousand eight hundred because two thousand is going down to my payments and this is going to take me 50 months which means 50 clicks as you can see if i speed it up it's going to go down and uh, my repayment of this loan is going to be ongoing so outstanding debit now i have ninety eight thousand on a hundred thousand and 49 months to go or 40 yeah 49 months to go so it's going to keep going down until my loan is complete and once my loan is complete my repayment of 2000 is going to come back to my actual balance here so it's going to be 178000 back now it did go down because my economy is fluctuating a bit so this is in terms of loans options panel if you want to open up your options panel instead of going to the menu and uh, clicking on the options which is here hold on let's close the view and clicking on the actual options menu and then clicking on the options you can directly push f1 so that's pretty good in case you want to change something really quickly like uh, graphics and sound and other things like that pollution buildings pollution buildings in general generate of course uh, high amounts of local contamination if we look at our actual let's take a look at our environment and let's take a look at our actual air pollution you see uh, there's a high contamination of pollution happening here because of the heavy industry it's uh, pretty high let's uh, take a look at it again environment and as you can see here it says environment is not satisfactory and it's very red so in general pollution buildings generate a high amount of dissatisfaction in terms of the environment in general each pollution building not only does it generate pollution for the local area itself but also it increases uh, the map overall pollution by just a little bit so for example even if i have a lot of industries over here this whole area is a lot of industries and i do have some buildings or some residentials over here in general if you increase a massive amount of heavy industry that always adds a little total map effect of pollution as well so have you ever noticed that you don't get elites for the heavy industry high densities as you can see here there are no heavy there are no uh, elites required for uh, heavy industry heavy industry high density buildings so it's pretty interesting if, if you want to know exactly why just hold on and i'll explain to you why they designed the game in a way that you don't have any elites for the heavy industry so this is pretty much it in terms of pollution specialization you have to understand that each city should be specialized in some sort of form so no matter what you build a lot of you'll always get a building that gives you a specialization ability meaning you can increase the production that being of heavy industry commerce offices agriculture water oil electricity waste whatever you build you can always build a specialization these buildings you can find in the exceptional tabs the majority of them have them so for example if i'm building heavy industry and i click the exceptional tab you will see i can specialize and uh, this building will give me as you can see shaded 30 percent more heavy industry production so that's a 30 percent bonus for my heavy industry these are massive bonuses that should be attained remember you should specialize your towns in certain things and uh, really aim to get these specialization buildings as these will really kickstart your economy substantially roads tunnels bridges and metros a good thing to keep in mind with roads tunnel bridges and metros is that you have a little bit of variations especially in roads now 
as you see I did open up the roads tab you have various uh, different amounts of roads each road when you move your mouse on it shows you the maximum cash flow, maximum flow which is 10 cars per minute and the maintenance cost of one of course a larger roads if I'm gonna go to it is gonna have for example the largest currently now is the expressway as you see the name above it and if I move my mouse on it says maximum flow 160 cars per minute but it's gonna cost me 18 credits for maintenance costs so keep in mind that your roads can be upgraded but make sure to use them wisely and make sure not to use expressways all over the place generally what you're gonna need is later on in the game the artery of all your cities and all your uh, you can say businesses should be the large avenues and you should have a very little if not expressways now in terms of bridges you can create a bridge from any road for example, I'm going to click this road. I'm going to build it from here and uh, I'm going to move it here. And then for some odd reason, let's say I'm going to have water here. What you're going to do is you're going to hold shift on your keyboard and move it up. Move your mouse up and you see the road rises. Of course, the steep, the angle is too steep. So you're going to go slowly about it. You're going to move it like that and then move it up again. Let's move it a little bit lower and then move it up. Let's move it a little bit down. And as you can see, you can create your own bridge by holding down the shift key. Of course, you can also go under the ground by holding the shift key. That's up to you. You, of course, have the bridges here, the bridges selection tab. So I can click it here and I already have a preset bridge. So the roads you can hire and lower when you hold shift. But if you do want to specifically build a bridge, I would suggest you select the bridge here. Select again what type of bridge. All of bridges vary, of course, on the type and the amount of uh, cars they allow to flow across. For example, the cheap bridge is going to cost me maintenance cost 10 credits. But of course, the maximum flow is 20 cars per minute. But if I go to the more expensive bridges, of course, the maximum flow is 320 cars per minute. But the maintenance cost is 50 credits per square meter or per whatever, per block of the actual bridge itself. The same sort of methodology applies to when you're building your metro station. Now, I don't have a metro station here. But I do have one here. So let's uh, build my metro station. I'm going to go to public transport and I'm going to click my metro station. And as you can see, I already have one here. And uh, some locations you will not be able to build your metro. It's not that it can't be built there. It's just that the building's in the way. So here it will allow me. Let's build it somewhere where I can't. As you can see, these buildings are in the way. So what I'm going to do is hold shift and uh, move my mouse. Hold on. Move my mouse down. So you can see here now I moved it low so as you can see now I can sort of place it there so if I put shift and move up you can see the road is very high it goes in the way but if I move it down I can left click when it's green there it's green and now I can again hold shift and move it all the way up just I'm moving my mouse up and uh, move it back a little back again shift and moving my mouse up again and as you can see I can position it here so in a way I do have a gradient in uh, my metro as well the beginning is going sort of sloped downwards and this section is going to be sloped upwards to build it so it's pretty simple I'm going to remake an example here again I'm going to click it shift move my mouse down as you can see it goes deeper into the ground and uh, shift and up and I can make different different types of slopes. So this is what you can do to place your metro stations in locations where sometimes it won't allow you because the buildings or the building infrastructure from below the building won't allow you to build it. So just hold shift and move uh, move your mouse down so you make a sort of slope, downward sloping, so you make the metro station go deeper into the ground and then you slope it back up to where you want it to pop out from. The City Hall. The City Hall is one of the main buildings you're going to start off with in the game. Of course, the City Hall can be upgraded over time. You can upgrade the City Hall in relation to how big your city is. You're going to ask, why do you want to upgrade your City Hall? It's going to cost me more. Well, yeah, but the more effective your City Hall is, the more effective you're going to be gathering the taxes from the actual population itself. So then the next question is, but how the hell do I supposed to know when to upgrade the City Hall? Well, I don't really believe there is any formula, but what I sort of do, well, my own formula is, it depends on what the City Hall requires 
required. So for example, I do have a city now with every single possible uh, different class of citizens. So in a way, I should really have the last city hall, which is for 15,000 per month. So I am going to switch to that now. And as you can see, it did just go down by a little bit. Let's upgrade that for my city hall to come online. City hall will be coming online pretty soon and it should pretty much uh, reduce a little bit of my money. But overall, it's not going to make such a big impact. It did like take away maybe 10, 15,000 from my city overall. But it does improve the overall performance in being able to gather the tax. As you can see, it did reduce a lot of money uh, in terms of my profit, but didn't really make such a great impact. So then I know that I still really don't need to upgrade to the city hall in general, to the maximum. The city hall, I don't need to upgrade to its actual maximum. When you start off, you have the smaller version of the city hall, which is only 1500 uh, cost per month or 500 maximum cost per month, but construction cost is 1500. So the best thing to know when to upgrade it in the beginning, let's say you only have skilled and you're unskilled. So these are my unskilled, sorry, these are my skilled. So I'm gonna probably just need the city hall. When I get my executives, I might upgrade to the medium sized city. So maybe around 30 to 40, 50,000 population mark. When I start having a population of, let's say, 150, I'll upgrade to the city hall. As you can see, I'm at a population of 217, and still I'm not at the last last stage of my city hall, which is really large, as really most of the buildings are pretty happy and satisfied. They have a 70% satisfaction rate, which is pretty high, and it's sort of, it's sort of okay. Keep in mind, your city hall also gives you a landmark effect, so when you click on it, you notice there's a big white little circle or small circle if you have the smaller version of the city hall and uh, the white circle of course improves the actual overall you can say uh, satisfaction of the environment itself you'll notice that this greatly affects the elites as the elites uh, like to have a uh, pretty uh, nice surrounding area so inhabitants average satisfaction as you can see so far it's pretty good so uh, Landmark effect is very good in terms of keeping your citizens happy, of course, if there's a lot of rubbish, a lot of uh, road traffic, and overall uh, that sort of uh, negative effects on uh, the surroundings, it'll come down. So it's uh, very important to also place your city hall, usually in the downtown centers. I majority of the time do place my city hall where my skilled workers are, or you can place that, then move it later on to your executives and then uh, maybe move it down to your elites as well. As you can see, the landmark effect is very important in keeping the actual location pleasant and uh, enjoyable for your citizens to stay in. As you can see, my unskilled have very little landmark effect. I have a little bit on my skill. That's the majority of why it's due to the city hall effect. The city hall has been updated and my executives have uh, a little bit more. This is our my actual offices, sorry, have a little bit more. Offices also rely on your city hall or on the landmark effect. Sorry, we'll get to that later. As you can see, I have a park for my offices because when you click on the actual offices, it says the quality of life is 71%. Of course, the quality of life increases the more offices, I mean, the more parks you have around and the more leisures and the trees and gardens and so on and so forth. So if you go to decorations, you have all these types of plazas, wood area areas, construction site area, urban place areas, all these sort of areas. I do believe the positive ones such as this one, this one, wooden park areas do improve the actual landmark and improve the surrounding as well. So executives have a little bit more and elites, as you can see, are completely covered by the actual landmark effect because they're spoiled little bastards. Keep in mind, of course, each new wealth group has more demands than the previous one. So, for example, when I build my unskilled laborers, they don't really need much. But when I build my skilled, they need more leisures, sports leisures and cultural leisures. And when I build my executives, they need more of that and they need more city services. And of course, my elites literally need everything of everything. So keep in mind when you are going to expand into different types of classes and wealth groups uh, that their demands will go up. So make sure that you do have the money to sort of support that initial investment so you can continue to grow. Now, if you're having trouble with buildings uh, in terms of that you're not sure why they're not filling up or you're not sure why your citizens aren't coming in, the best thing is to click on the building and see what their problem is. See, over here I have employment satisfaction is low. It's not really a big problem, but sometimes it might appear that they don't have enough leisures or sometimes it might appear that they don't have enough education and health. So do make sure they do get that. Offices uh, may do the same thing. So they might tell you that they're not satisfied with this or not satisfied with that. 
you know business hotels are uh, pretty much as well they do have some satisfaction rates don't only uh, keep an eye out on uh, the bottom tabs that pop up so for example if I go back to my housings as you see the bottom tab infos don't always rely on the infos sometimes rely on the actual stats so offices will not sometimes pop up info and tell you exactly what they need sometimes you'll see the quality of life is terrible and the nearby services are also terrible so don't expect that the offices will grow if these two as well are very low of course, some buildings that you are going to place are requiring only some specific sections. For example, if I do want to place, for example, a water-based building, I can only place it in a water-based area. As you can see, it highlights the area for me. And electricity buildings, I can literally place anywhere I want. But electricity buildings, again, pr produce pollution. Waste buildings produce also pollution. So this is not an issue in placing waste buildings. But if I want to place fuel, as you can see, I can't place it anywhere because it only allows me not suit. The terrain must appear highlighted on the ground. I have no fuel, so keep in mind that some buildings do require specific locations for you to place them. For example, holidays only can be placed in locations that are highlighted for holiday sections themselves. We are going to close down and uh, coming down to an end. Another thing to keep an eye on is your actual resources. If you're going to click on the open resources tab, make sure that the majority of uh, the resources you have and services are at zero. If it's a plus, it's not such a big deal, but try to keep it at zero because if you do have minus numbers in some resources, you will realize that that will also hinder your actual development and advancements in the game themselves. So try to zero it out. And if you can't really zero it out because you can't produce that resource, you can always import it from Omnicorp. Now to do that you hit the main menu, you hit the trade and this is your city and you want to trade with Omnicorp so you're going to hit that as well and you can import from Omnicorp by pushing the left it means you can import from there to here and you can obviously export from you to them as well. Freight. Now the last thing to know when you're trading by the way is uh, that you do have a limit as you can see I have a limit of freight capacity and passenger capacity. How many passengers, meaning skilled, unskilled, executives and elites, I can export and uh, how much freight capacity I can import and export as well. Now there is a limit to this. Of course you can increase this limit. For example, if I'm going to export, I can now export freight capacity of 120 tokens maximum before I have to increase my freight capacity. To increase the freight capacity for my exporting and importing, you can do two things. Uh, the cheapest method is to actually build roads to the side of your actual town. If you click the road, you will see that you have the purple sort of colored things around your actual map. So of course, uh, the best thing is to place it as close to the edge as possible. And uh, there you go. And uh, you build uh, that road there. Usually use the cheapest road. And once you actually do find a sort of level terrain, where you can build it that sort of and then you connect that to your actual main road itself and as you see we shall have let's take a look at our freight now this is just to give you a quick example my mouse is messing about freight capacity 120 so I did build that remember it does cost you I do believe like around 120 credits to keep this going let's left click it how much it's still nothing but it's gonna cost you so build the cheapest road possible so you don't pay a lot of maintenance costs so you move here and uh, okay and uh, let's take a look at the cost it's connected now what is the cost to give it a little bit of time let's speed it up not connected to the city hall it will be soon there we go a hundred so a hundred cost but now let's take a look at our freight we were at 120 and now we should be substantially more just a little bit more 140 so you can obviously keep connecting this by road to the whole map itself you can go on by the edge to the edge to the edge and take out all the purple sections to increase your freight of course another way of increasing freight is uh, having airports large airports small airports each different types of airports do increase your freight as well so transport capacity 240 so I'm not sure if this actually increases by 240 or by 24 I'd still have to do some research to, to find the exact number but of course larger airports increase your freight capacity by more smaller airports increase your freight capacity by less and you have harbors as well large harbors small harbors and uh, that's about it overall uh, each uh, you can say a freight really varies in uh, comparison to to, to how, you, how you build up the town itself. So uh, it really depends on how you connect the town to the border, to the borders, or how you connect the town to the airports and uh, the harbors themselves.
Critical over and under production. Remember, each city can continuously expand even if you're over and under producing. So don't think as you're at minus two, it won't be expanding more. Uh, this really relies on your actual uh, total population. So for example, if I have my population at 300,000, I can maybe go to a heavy industry of minus three and my population will still keep growing. But there is gonna be a point when you're gonna hit, hit that critical over or under production. So if my heavy industry hits to minus four, and my economy is still running. Let's say because my population is at 300,000, my critical underproduction, you can say, uh, benchmark is gonna be at minus six. So once I hit minus six, you realize that my actual uh, manufacturing, since uh, manufacturing requires heavy industry, you'll see that my manufacturing industry, when I click on them, if this would be manufacturing, they would say cannot produce in the info section because due to the lack of heavy industry. So keep in mind this uh, benchmark or this uh, critical over or under production benchmark you have really varies on your population itself so you can continuously expand even though you are at a minus stage but keep in mind that it will hit a point where you can't and your actual businesses and cities and citizens will demand that you supply that resource or service now since we're in the terms of talking about the actual resources and services it's a good idea to also keep uh, an eye on your actual population itself. So this is the resource tab. So make sure that the passengers and uh, the freight are practically at zero. If it's a plus, you can always export it. If it's a minus, try to import it from Omnicorp. Now, the population itself is, of course, a very, very useful tab to see how much unemployment you have, preferably below 5%. As you can see, I have pretty much high unemployment here, but I'm still not done with it. So this is a good place to see how much unemployed you have, how many available jobs there are, and how many immigrants are coming in? Well, the majority of times I'm looking at available jobs and unemployment. If I have available jobs of 10% and unemployment of zero, it means I know I need to produce more or build more houses for unskilled workers. This is a very useful tab in terms of being able to see exactly what type of class of citizens you need to build and what type of housing is required to build to sort of equal out your economy itself. As you can see, I have executive 16% unemployment. So either I'm gonna build jobs for them or I'm gonna demolish their houses as 16% unemployment is a little bit too high. If it's between 5% and below, maybe even up to 10, 10% still high, I do presume 5% is fine. But anything more than that, if you're not using those uh, citizens, then just destroy their houses, reduce the unemployment and keep a little bit lower. Their overall satisfaction is high as well. To see their satisfaction rate in general, these different classes, you have, of course, the different classes here as well. As you can see, the darker green color is very satisfied. They're having trouble moving in, but whatever, I don't want more of them because then I'll just have more unemployed, so I'm not going to be building any more houses for them. But my skilled workers are a little less satisfied. They're 71% while my unskilled are at 85 and 67 for my executives and 69 for my elites. Now, they're mainly unsatisfied because they don't have jobs, but... Uh, I can increase their satisfaction, of course, by removing the unemployment since 60% uh, is pretty high and elites are pretty spoiled. So even at 6%, their satisfaction is at 69%. But at 16% unemployed executives, their satisfaction is at 67%. So you can see the difference between the executives and my elites on the difference of their needs and demands. And of course, finally, expert mode. Expert mode, of course, unlocks all the buildings and ev literally nearly everything that you have in the game without uh, unlocking it by going through the achievements and requirements for each building. So, uh, of course, specializations, uh, specialization buildings can unlock because you require standard buildings, but literally everything is unlocked, including all types of uh, high density, low density for uh, housing and industrial, everything is unlocked. So you go to the menu, you go to the options section, you go to the menu, option section, and then you go down to advanced and uh, no way hold on where it is miscellaneous and you have expert mode here if you untick it uh, everything will be locked and you'll have to unlock it as you progress but if you select it everything by default is already unlocked and you can just uh, literally build nearly everything right right off the get-go from the beginning of the game and uh, lastly but not least just a quick one in terms of uh, building your farms it really doesn't make a difference which farm you build because uh, all the farms really produce the same resource so it really depends on your taste i did mix it up a bit just so it gives a little different landscape so you can obviously build uh, different types of farms if you want to give it a little bit of uh, you can say design but uh, in terms of farms it really doesn't matter what you build as long as you just build any farm and use up all the space you have now uh, the same principle applies also to waste so let's take a look at our waste you have over here you have the 
dump and you have the junkyard dump and junkyard is the same now the farm in terms of size wise makes a difference in the size you build to try to make them at a hundred percent when you're actually placing the farm down it shows you the percentage uh, let me just give you a quick example when i'm here and i'm building my farm it's gonna give me a hundred percent so uh, you can see on, the, on here on the right side it shows me the percentage try to get them at a hundred percent with your farms but when you're building your waste uh, waste or dirty cities it really doesn't matter if it's the dump or the junkyard it's the same thing and uh, the size wise also doesn't matter so don't build a big dump because you think or a big junkyard because you think that uh, it'll be more effective it's not really more effective size wise at all size doesn't matter with the dump or the junkyard build it as small as possible because both cases you're going to be paying that 5,000 monthly cost as you can see when I move my mouse over it as well so uh, that's really about it for a really very basic uh, broad coverage of the actual game itself i'll be releasing again a more intense tutorials on specific sections and locations so give it a thumbs up if you like it if you learned something new and subscribe if you'd like to get notified once i do release those new videos in terms of this game itself happy gaming and see you again next time bye